fun. New Year's resolutions. Hmm. Who has theirs already? Let me hear from you if you got your New Year's resolutions. All right. All right. <laughs> Who has already broken their New Year's resolution? <laughs> If you're Colton, you refuse to make New Year's resolutions. It's just like, it's a part of who he is. Now, I did some research, aka I Googled, and I found the top three New Year's resolutions of the year are to exercise more, eat healthier, and lose some weight. Come on, somebody. That beach bod starts in January. Am I right? And here's something I found that was interesting when I was looking this up is the most common New Year's resolution to fail is to drink less alcohol. So there you go. And then numbers two, three, and four were the exact ones that everybody wants to actually keep, to exercise more, to eat healthier, and, uh, and to lose some weight. Those were number two, three, and four of the least kept New Year's resolutions. So it made me think, why in the world, why do New Year's resolutions so often not work? I don't know about y'all, but I've had many New Year resolutions that I did not actually complete. Anybody else in the house ever not complete a resolution? Okay, everyone else, you're a liar. Okay, <laughs> and that should be your resolution. Where's my wife? Here, take this jacket, babe. Uh, <laughs> I didn't mean it like that. We are an equal opportunity marriage, okay? <laughs> she has a baby and everything. I look worse and worse, okay. <laughs> My new year resolution is to treat her better, okay. <laughs> In fact, here's what I found. is over 80% of new year resolutions do not come to pass. And most of those are quit by the second Friday of the year. I, mean, I just want to encourage you today. I just want to encourage you. In fact, so, so many people quit that resolution that by the, third, the second Friday, they've actually coined that Friday as Quitter's Day. Quitter's Day. So we're going to be celebrating Quitter's Day in two weeks. Come back to church. It's going to be great. We'll encourage you then. Now, I started thinking, it's not just New Year's resolutions, though, that don't come to pass. Why is it that not only New Year's resolutions don't often come to pass, but why is it that there's other things in life that don't work? Why is it that 50% of marriages end in divorce? Hello? Why is it that 80% of people that go to college end up changing their major? Or 40 times change their major? Why is it that 70% of people that win the lottery end up broke afterwards? Because they didn't tithe. <laughs> I'm just kidding. Why is it that 67% of people that get a gym membership never walk foot into the gym? Some of y'all are paying for Planet Fitness since 2020. <laughs> and you still have no idea the first Friday of the month they give you free pizza. All right, so you should go. It's great. 67% of people never, never do that. Why is it that 65%, 65%, this is crazy, of dieters, they lose weight, and three years later, they have the weight right back. They gain it all back. Now, there's some negative things, but why, on the other hand, are there some things that are just easy to do? I don't know about y'all, but I am incredible. I am maybe the world's best at drinking coffee every day. 100% of the time. I cannot tell you a time I've ever missed my coffee. Why am I 100% of that, but I'm 22% at the gym? That's my gym partner. <laughs> Why is it when you leave here today, you do not have to put in your GPS how to get home? It's on autopilot. In fact, you will leave Bearden High School and you won't even know which way to turn. You just go. Why is it that you're so much on autopilot that you know that you can roll through that red light? <laughs> I know you do. You can roll through that stop sign. Why is it that there's some things in life that are easy to quit and there's other things in life that are easy to consistently keep up? What, what is it in us? Now, 
There's an oversimplified answer that I'm going to suggest to you today, okay? I got 30 minutes to suggest the most simple answer that I can give to you today. And for some of you, you're not gonna love it at first. And I hope by the end of today, you can at the very least understand it and maybe, maybe start to apply it to your life. See, the reason you do certain things or you don't do other things is simply this. It's because of your structure. You are currently structured to get the results you are currently getting. Your brain is structured in such a way to get you home without you even having to consciously think about turn left here. Your brain knows. It's a structure. You are perfectly structured to receive the results you're getting right now. Let me get in your business a little bit today. That relational issue that you have in your life, you are perfectly structured to get the results you're getting. The marriage issue you got, you are perfectly structured to get the results you are getting. Your financial situation, you are perfectly structured to get the results you are currently getting. Now, don't hear what I'm not saying. There are some times where bad things just happen and it's outside of your control, but those are far less prevalent than our blame of other people and other things would lead us to believe. More often than not, we are responsible. In fact, I've been a part of every bad decision I've ever made. I'm willing to bet that you have too. We like to think, or maybe it's just me, but we like to think it's always somebody else's fault for the things that are happening in our life. When the reality is, we're simply getting the results and receiving what we're structured to receive. Now, this is a problem. <laughs> And in fact, this is the problem with New Year resolutions. It's the problem. It's because so many of us, we resolve, but we never restructure. Hello. Resol resolution without restructure in our life is really akin to getting married, but living single. When I got married... <laughs> I had to restructure some things in my life because I wanted a healthy marriage. Is that true, babe? I could no longer eat Zaxby's every day for lunch and Fruity Pebbles every night for dinner. <laughs> I had to restructure. I could no longer watch whatever I wanted to watch. I could no longer go to the gym whenever I wanted to go to the gym. I, I could no longer do exactly every single thing that I wanted to do because I had to restructure and our marriage came two people together. See, too many of us resolve to do something new. Some people here today, you will resolve to do something large, something big, something full of faith something amazing for the Lord. But as long as you resolve, but you never restructure, I can promise you one thing, that resolution will go right back into the grave. You've got to restructure. I've got to restructure. And for many people here today, for myself today, as you, as you start the new year and you, you get your new year resolutions and you write down your goals and you put it in a beautiful little spreadsheet and you mark it off, all the type A's, you're checking stuff off and you feel incredible at the new year, right? And then six months in, you're like, I hate my life. <laughs> and as you're doing all this and you're starting these new resolutions, I, I love that, by the way. I'm going to do that starting new habits. But if you don't restructure your life, you won't be able to hold the blessings that God wants to send in 2023. You won't be able to actually accomplish what it is you want to accomplish. Now, today, we're going to be in Matthew chapter 25. It's one of my favorite stories in the entire New Testament. Matthew chapter 25, it's Jesus telling a parable. Now, if you don't know, a parable is a story that Jesus would tell his disciples. It's a story that Jesus would tell those that follow him. It's a story that he would tell to those around him to try to get a bigger point 
a cross. And what I'm afraid of today is that many of us, we will resolve without restructuring, which will lead us to frustration, disappointment, and a lack of motivation for the new year. And what I don't want for you is I don't want you to do that. <laughs> I want you to have the best year possible. I want to have the best year spiritually I've ever had. Somebody should say amen. <laughs> because you should want your pastor to have the best year spiritually he's ever had. And you should also want to have the best year spiritually you've ever had. But you can't get there if you don't have the right structure. Matthew chapter 25 and verse number 14. Matthew 25 and verse number 14. It says this, it is the parable of the talents. Now, let, let me pause and give you a little bit of context here as well. Is Jesus is telling a story about the kingdom of God. Kingdom of God. And the kingdom of God is not a kingdom that's built on geography. It's a kingdom that's built in your heart. The, the kingdom of God is not a kingdom that is built on wars. It's not a kingdom that's built on flesh and blood. It is a kingdom that is built on the Holy Spirit of God. And this is the kingdom that Jesus came to institute in our world. Jesus did not come to start churches with flashy lights. Jesus came to set up the kingdom. Hello. And when he's talking about the kingdom... He says this, again, the kingdom, the kingdom, the kingdom will be like a man going on a journey who called his servants and entrusted his property to them. This is God entrusting to his servants. That's you. That's me. Verse 15, to one he gave five talents of money, to another he gave two talents, and to another one talent. Some tra translations may say five bags of gold, two bags of gold, one bag of gold each according to his ability. The man who had received five talents went at once and put his money to work and gained five more. So also the one with two talents gained, you guessed it, two more. But the man who had received the one talent went off, dug a hole in the ground and hid his master's money. After a long time, the master of those servants returned and settled accounts with them. The man who had received five brought the other five. Master, he said, you entrusted me with five talents. See, I have gained five more. His master replied, well done, good and faithful servant. You have been faithful with a few things. I will make you in charge of many things. Come and share your master's happiness. The man with two talents also came. Master, he said, you entrusted me with two talents. See, I've gained two more. His master said, well done, good and faithful servant. You have been faithful with a few things. I will put you in charge of many things. Come and share your master's happiness. Let me pause here for just a second. It didn't matter if they had five or two. What mattered is what they did with what they were given. And the response was, well done, good and faithful servant. I don't know about you, but one day when I meet King Jesus, I want to hear, well done, good and faithful servant. Amen. Continues on. The man, let's see, verse 23. His master replied, well done, good and faithful servant. Verse 24. Then the master who had received the one talent, then the man who had received the one talent said, master, I knew that you were a hard man, harvesting where you have not sown and gathering where you have not scattered seed. So I was afraid and went out and hid your talent in the ground. See, here is your talent. Here is what belongs to you. His master replied, you wicked, lazy servant. Not good and faithful servant, wicked, lazy servant. You see that? It's like, there's not a lukewarm section here. <laughs> there's not a kind of good there's a good and lazy. Just wanted to point that out. Not a part of the sermon. Okay. So you knew that a harvest where I have not sown and gathered where I have not scattered seed. Well then, you should have put my money on deposit with the bankers so that when I returned, I would have received it back with interest. Take the talent from him and give it to the one who has 10 talents. For everyone who has will be given more and he will have an abundance. Whoever does not have, even what he has will be taken away from him. Man. Now, I don't know about you, but that is a heck of a story. 
That is a sobering story that these guys received from the master, a.k.a. the Lord, and when they received from the Lord, they went and they put it into practice. They applied something while the other cat put it in the hole in the ground thinking that what he was doing was actually best when in reality the master wanted a return on his investment. Now, you're starting some New Year resolutions this year. I'm starting some New Year resolutions this year. And what none of us want is to get to December 31st, 2023, and look back on our year and think, wow, I did none of it. None of it. So the question is, what can we learn from this? Well, my question is, why did the servant that had five bags, how did he get five more? How did the one with two bags, how did he get two more? How did they do this? And I believe today that it was because they had a structure to handle the blessings that the Lord had given to them. The guy with one bag, he had no structure. And so what did he do? He threw it into the ground. That's what you do when you don't know what else to do. You just throw it on the ground. He didn't have the structure. What happens to you when you get a New Year's resolution? Or let's get extra spiritual today, okay? What happens when you get a calling from the Lord? in 2023. What happens when you feel strongly that God has called you to do something, but you don't have the structure in place to accomplish what God has called you to accomplish? It'll fall to the lowest common denominator, aka a hole in the ground. So, how then in 2023 do you build a structure to support a calling? How do you build a structure to support a calling? Because this scripture is not just talking about investing. Jesus is talking about the kingdom of God. He's less concerned about finances and he's a lot more concerned about your heart. That the kingdom of God is it's a calling. It's a calling to build it. It's a calling to steward it. It's a calling to be faithful to it. It's a calling for all of us that call Jesus our Savior, that call him our King, to steward what he's given to us. I don't care if you, you bag groceries every day, or you lead people, or you count beans, or you operate on somebody's heart while they're on a, a table in the hospital. Whatever you do in 2023, God has called you to make a difference. And that means you need a structure in your life to hold what God is going to call you to do. You need a structure to grow into the type of person you desire to be. And I hope you got some stuff you desire. You need a structure to grow into the husband you desire to be for your wife. Hello. The dad you desire to be for your kids. The leader you desire to be for your employees. And I don't mean to preach at you today, but I need you to understand that it, whatever you want out of life, you cannot get if you don't restructure and structure in such a way to get what God has called you to get. God wants to do something big through you. He wants to do something big through me. And... and <laughs> This year at, at Heart and Soul, man, I, I'm, I'm honestly like as a pastor, I'm tired and done with just like the frilly things. Like I, I want the Holy Spirit to work in and through me. I want God to work in and through me. And I, I don't want God just to work in and through me. I want God to work in and through every single person in the rows of our church. I, I don't know if you've ever asked this before, but what happens if 400 people at Heart and Soul Church activate and start to live out their faith? Yeah. Hello! Knoxville changes forever! 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 If we can start and capture this structure, and I'm not talking about, and we'll get to it in a minute. Some of y'all think, well, this sure does sound like trying harder and working harder, and it sounds like work, work, work. And I just believe that God is a God of grace and mercy. And yes, hold up, bruh. I'm building an argument. 
There's, there's three things I believe you need this year and I need this year. Three things that are going to help us to build a structure, to restructure our hearts and our lives, okay? And if you're taking notes, which I hope you are, because you're never going to remember this if you don't take notes. Ever. Ever. <laughs> Here's what I want for you this year and what I want for me this year is I want to help you to get fat. <laughs> Hallelujah! <laughs> Like, where's them Christmas tree cakes again? <laughs> That's why I come to this church. <laughs> Y'all remember those? Those are good, bro. They just, man. And then they run out right before Christmas, which is the worst. And anyway, get fat. Get fat. F-A-T. My wife is so mad at me right now. She gone. <laughs> Get fat, get fat. F-A-T. If you're taking notes, F is faithful. Faithful. A structure that's going to hold what God wants to do in and through your life this year is one that starts with faithfulness. Now, spiritual faithfulness is no different than any other type of faithfulness. And I find it so funny. We Christians, we love to just, we love to separate things. <laughs> And we like to think, well, uh, spiritual faithfulness is different than uh, being faithful in my marriage. It's like, no. Like, what is being faithful to your spouse? It's having faith that your spouse is not going to cheat on you and your spouse having faith that you're not going to cheat on them. And then, what do you know? Being faithful to hold up to that. W what, is, what is faithfulness in your workplace? Well, it's having faith that your boss is going to pay you. Hello. <laughs> 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 that was Tristan. He works for the church. <laughs> and then being faithful to do the jobs and remember the lyrics. <laughs> it's New Year's, is it, baby? Okay. <laughs> so what is spiritual faithfulness? Okay. All right. It's the same thing. <laughs> it's having faith in God and then operating out of that faith, operating in faithfulness to God. Let me say it a different way. Faith is akin to belief. Faithfulness is akin to behavior. We believe and then we behave. Another way to say it is faithfulness is like a habit. In fact, it's even more than that. It's a collection of habits. These servants... They were one key word, if nothing else. The five-bag Timmy and two-bag Bobby. They were faithful. They were faithful. They did what they were supposed to do when they were supposed to do it. They invested what was first invested into them. Their habits led them to where they got. It was faithfulness in action. Faithfulness in action that proved that the servants had faith in the master. The question is, okay, well, how much faith did they have? Because, I don't know, a bag of gold, that's kind of foreign to me. What does that even equate to? Well, a bag of gold in this time period would be worth about 15 years, uh, average 15 years worth of salary. I don't know about y'all, but I need a master like that. <laughs> 15 years. So I want you to do some mental math real quick and think about how much you make annually and then multiply that times 15. Welcome to algebra class. But for sake of argument, let's just say that it was around, around a million. Okay? Some of y'all are like, wow, that's a, I would love that, <laughs> 15 years. Around a million. Now, that is a heavy investment. He rolls in and gives... Five million, two million, and one million? That's a lot. That's a, that's a whole lot. Like if you were given a million dollars, how would you turn around and invest that? Hopefully not in Dogecoin. <laughs> but you would do something. You would do something with it. These guys were invested heavily in. And what can happen to us as followers of Jesus what can happen to us as, dare I say, American 
citizens. That, hello, you, if you're here today and listening to this in a local high school, you are in the top 1% of the entire world. No matter where you fall on the socioeconomic scale, living in America does that. We are so blessed in our country. And I believe it's hard for us sometimes to, to see this next point that we can often receive blessings and rather than being faithful with what we've given and steward it well, we can instead compare what we have with what they have. Mm. The five bag Timmy could have compared with two bag Tommy. But instead, they just invested what they were given. See, many of us, you can find yourself with really a million blessings in your life, but no joy. A million blessings, but no peace. A million reasons to be thankful and have no gratitude in your life. Why? Because comparison will always lead you away from faithfulness, not toward it. Let me also just go ahead and say, you've never met a jealous person that was actually also faithful with what God had given to them. You've never met a jealous person that, has, that was grateful for what God had given to them. A fish can't live out of water. And it is impossible, impossible for a jealous person to be faithful. Impossible. You got five bag dudes, you got two bag dude, and they are being faithful as much as they possibly can. They're not perfect. They didn't get it all right, but at least they tried. Which leads also to what, what we have to be faithful to, what we have to have our faith in. See, you're not responsible to be faithful to the result. Let me free you up in 2023. You are responsible for the process. You are not responsible. Hello? You are not responsible for the results. You are responsible for your effort. You are not responsible for what you reap. You are responsible for what you sow. You're not responsible for how big the harvest is. You are responsible for how much seed you throw. Hello. <laughs> you are not responsible for the return on the investment. You are responsible for the investment. And if you get nothing else, all of 2023, if you don't listen to me ever again, if you leave this church and never come back, praise God. <laughs> Goodbye. But take this with you. Not like praise God that you're leaving, but I don't know. I'm just praising God. <laughs> Let a man praise the Lord in the storm, okay? <laughs> if you leave and you go live your life, please just remember, it ain't nobody else's responsibility but yours in the process. That's it. You're responsible for what you plant. I'm responsible for what I plant. I'm responsible for raising my kids. I'm not responsible for changing them when they're adults. I'm responsible for how I treat other people. I am not responsible for how they treat me back. Let me back up. I am responsible for how I treat other people. I am not responsible for how they treat me back. <laughs> <laughs> I'm, somebody's going to get it today. I am responsible for how I treat other people. I am not responsible for how other people treat me. And what happens is so many people, we want to control everything that's outside of our control rather than controlling what's in our control. That's why you're so stressed. <laughs> that's why you walk around anxious. What are they thinking about me? What's happening over there? I wonder what they said when I, oh my goodness. I'm wearing loafers today, and I knew some people was talking about me, okay? <laughs> <laughs> and I cut my heel, too, because I've never worn loafers before. I'm trying to be a dad. And <laughs> I 
I can't control what people are thinking right now. I put the thought in your mind, okay? I can't control what you think about my penny loafers. All I can control is how much tape I put on my heel. And the more you try to control situations outside of your actual control, the more stressed out you're going to feel, baby. Mm. <laughs> Their relationship is not yours. Hello. <laughs> Man, and the more you focus on their relationship, the worse yours gets. It's just a fact, man. You can't be faithful to something that's in your control when you're so focused on what's out of your control. In fact, it's really, I think that's one of the greatest mysteries, just in general. Like, this is not a Christian thing. This is just a thing thing. Like, <laughs> You can only control what's in your control. In 2023, you can't control what they do, but you can control what you do. And the more you concentrate on what's in your control, the bigger your circle of control actually gets. And the more you concentrate on things outside of your control, the smaller what was once in your control actually gets. It's a great mystery. That's why this year, if anything else, you ought to be faithful, faithful to what God wants to do in your life. Be faithful. It's why habits are so important. Habits will make or break your 2023. It will make or break it. What are the habits that you have instilled in your life? What are they? Do you know? Do you know why you wake up in the morning and the first thing you do is get on that social media platform? And for those type A people in the building, check your email. <laughs> do, you, do you know that that's a habit? James Clear says, every decision you make is a vote for the type of person you want to be. One of my favorite quotes of all time. Every decision you make the rest of this year is a vote. It's a vote. It's a vote. It's a vote for who you want to be. Good or bad, there are no neutral habits. Good or bad. The most important thing that you can do in 2023 is to start and build some habits. That's faithful. Number two is available. Available. If you want to get fat, you got to be faithful, but then also you got to be available. You got to be available. Let me start the new year with a, a massive cliche. Okay. Do we like cliches here? Yeah. Sure. Okay. The greatest ability is availability. Wow. Wow. Man. Well, by God, that's so deep. That is just... Now, let me pause here for a second and just say, it is. <laughs> That's much deeper than you actually think it is. Being available is one of the greatest things you could ever do. See, God is not waiting around, waiting on somebody to get better before he uses them. God is not looking for good people. God is looking for available people. Talk to Moses, fresh off killing a dude but available. <laughs> Look at Peter, fresh off cutting off an ear, but available. Some of y'all are like, man, you know, like uh, I, that's this one time, you know, I had sex outside of marriage and uh, are you available? <laughs> Can we be real in the house today? I'm done playing fake church. Okay. <laughs> well, I, I cheated on my taxes. Well, I don't know about all that. Like you talked to the IRS, big dog, but are you available? <laughs> as long as you tithe, big dog, we good. I'm just kidding. I had to throw in a tithe joke. Chill. It's okay. It's the new year. <laughs> are you available? God's not looking for perfect people. He's looking for available people. Your greatest ability in the kingdom of God might just be your availability. These guys, what they had in common was, man, they were available. They were just waiting around, waiting on the master to bring them something. And the master brought it to them, and then they did something with it. 
They did something with it. In fact, the, the old country preacher, <laughs> y'all love the old country preacher, he used to say, well, God doesn't call the qualified. He qualifies the call to them. <laughs> yeah. You know, I don't know. That's what he used to say. Available. Available. Are you available? Available. Benjamin Franklin says it this way. I am a strong believer in luck. And I find the harder I work, the more of it I have. <laughs> Man, he like started a country or something. <laughs> uh, it's incredible. Yes, with work, but the same thing with availability. It's strange to me. The people that grow the most just keep showing up. They just show up. The people that step into new leadership roles, they just showed up. <laughs> they just kept showing up. And some of y'all, your relationship, you got a story like this in your marriage where she did not want to date you and you just kept on asking. Till finally she said, would you leave me alone? I will go to coffee with you. Ten years later, three kids and a dog, y'all are still together. <laughs> may or may not be my story. <laughs> but some people here, you stopped knocking on the door of God. <laughs> are you available to what he wants to do in your life? I heard a quote a while back about the Holy Spirit. And, um, you know, I was raised Baptist, so we didn't talk a lot about the Holy Spirit. But, bro, we're about to talk about the Holy Spirit this year. Okay? So that's a side note. And all my charismatic friends, I'm like, praise the Lord, finally. Start speaking in tongues and stuff. Calm down, all right? We're going to get there. <laughs> Said this, the Holy Spirit is in you for you, but the Holy Spirit is on you for others. Amen. Mm. <laughs> that is so good. I wish I made that up. <laughs> in you for you, but on you for others. Are you available to the Holy Spirit speaking to you? I can promise you, if you know the Spirit, if, you, if you've given your life to the Lord, I believe the Holy Spirit of God lives inside of you. But do you hear him? See, so many of us, the Holy Spirit has been whispering, 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 and we have drowned him out so effectively with our phones. We have drowned him out so effectively with our music. We have drowned him out so effectively with Netflix. It is ridiculous. You could literally read, you could literally listen to the Bible in the time it takes you to watch Stranger Things. The whole Bible. <laughs> I think that's true. I made that up, but <laughs> that was the Holy Spirit convicting me. <laughs> you got to be careful with people with a mic, bro. <laughs> Available. In you for you, on you for others. Let me just let you know that, that this year, 2023, uh, I'm not talking about you being available to serve. I'm not even talking about you being available to attend church. <gasps> I would love for you to. I, I'm not talking about you being available in community. Incredible. I, I'm talking about you being available to the work of the Holy Spirit. In you for you, on you for others. See, the Holy Spirit, when he's working inside of you, he will come out of you. And when he comes out of you, he'll come out of you through church attendance. <laughs> oh, I'm coming back around. <laughs> he'll come out of you through serving others. He'll come out of you through generosity. He'll come out of you through grouping together with other people so that you can be challenged and encouraged and built up in the body of Christ. Are you available? And last is, are you teachable? Hello, if you want to get fat, you got to be faithful, you got to be available, and you got to be teachable. Amen. Man, you got to be teachable. This is probably the biggest problem, is we all know it all. 
<laughs> I mean, you can laugh at that because you know it. <laughs> we all know it all. Or at least we think we do. And what I know about growth in your life, because whatever your New Year resolution is this year, I promise you it has to do with growth. But you cannot grow without first being taught. Now that was deep. You can't, be, you can't grow without first being taught. And so many of us don't want to be taught. We don't want to be taught. We think we know it so much that we don't want to be taught. Or even worse, retaught. This is the biggest thing. There are so many things that we need to be retaught over and over and over and over and over and over and over again. I promise you there will be no transformation in your life without application in 2023. There is no transformation without application. And what could be the best thing for you in this year is not even to learn something new, but to do something with what God's already shown you. It's to actually do something about it. And you might listen to podcasts or you, you might have been in another church and you left that church because the, the, te the teacher or the preacher wasn't deep enough or whatever. Maybe he was just deep enough, but you just didn't apply anything. The depth doesn't matter if you don't apply it. Who cares how deep the water is if you can't swim, baby? You can drown in three inches of water the same that you can in 30 feet. I know that because I'm a dad now, and Sarah tells me don't leave the kids in the bathtub alone. <laughs> one bag, one bag uh, bill. Yeah, I'm going to call him that. One bag bill. He was unteachable. He thought he knew it all. Oh, but master, you are a hard man. I thought I was doing the best. After he'd just seen what the master said about two-bag Tommy and five-bag Timmy. Get out of here, bro. And this year, 2023, you can either make excuses in your life or you can make progress. It will be impossible for you to do both. The more you blame someone for how your life has ended up, the less your life will change. The more you blame someone else for your lack of growth, the less you'll actually grow. This year, and we're, we're going to be, we're doing a series here in a couple weeks. We're starting, it's called TikTok Told Me So. And I told Noah, who's here from Michigan, I told him, I was like, this is going to be the longest, this is going to be like 42 weeks long, okay? Because TikTok be telling you lots of stuff. And we got to talk about it. And this series, I'm believing, is going to be one of the most teachy type series we've ever done. And I think one of the most influential. But before we ever start teaching and learning and all that is great, man, what, what I wanna do this year is I just wanna be available to the Holy Spirit. I just wanna be available. I want him to teach me. I, I wanna be faithful to what, what he wants out of me. It's why January 3rd, we're starting 21 days of prayer and fasting. And because of your generosity, heart and soul, we, we were able to lease a, a smallish office space that we call our headquarters. And some of you have, have been there before. But we're going to actually be able to gather Monday through Friday at 6 a.m. together. And we're going we're gonna to be praying together and seeking the Lord. And ultimately, watch this, being available to what God wants to do. That's what I want for me. That's what I want for my family. That's what I want for our church is a posture of availability. That this year, if you want to restructure your life, you got to be faithful. You got to be available. You got to be teachable. Faithful, available, and teachable. Every head bowed and every eye closed.